So, uh, thanks for turning up to the next webinar. Uh, I am Mark, of course. Uh, welcome. So, this is the this is the webinar on the nice gate integrations uh, with the Home Center Three. Uh, funnily enough, the uh, Nice is actually the parent company of Fabar at the moment. They've actually bought them out, so it's a good thing to have uh, more pre-existing access control systems such as gates that can actually be controlled directly from the Fabar system as well. So uh, I'll just quickly go through the actual system, and then we'll actually set them up. So firstly, uh, Nice. Uh, Essentially, creator of a uh, lot of different gate opening systems for commercial or residential use. Um, they also have garage doors and stuff. Um, so we're actually going to be testing three different devices today. Uh, the first one is the Robus 400. Uh, if you actually see that just over my left, uh, just below my left shoulder, uh, we currently have one set up in the office. Um, it's very easy to program to the fact that I can just do this multiple times without any issues. Uh, very quiet operation. Um, it has ball bearing gears, so it still makes some sound, but generally it's the actual gate uh, functioning that actually makes sound in the office. Uh, has a battery backup available for it, so if you do end up experiencing uh, blackouts and the sort, you can still actually operate your gates. Um, however, there is also, if you don't have a battery backup for it, or you've had power out for a long period of time, uh, there is also a key override um, available for it, which allows you to manually operate the gate in those instances. Uh, the second one, uh, which is the Walkie uh, 1024, it's actually over my left hand side. Um, it's once again very easy to program, um, has automatic limit switch memorization, so it'll actually detect when it's reached a certain level of force. And then once it's actually reached the threshold, remember in its own internal memory to not go past that limit as well. Um, it does also have adjusted uh, deceleration speeds for opening and closing. So if you do end up at some, you know, getting something stuck there, it doesn't just decide to crush it or damage the motor, which is always a good thing to have. Um, much like the Robus as well, it does also have a key override available for it as well for manual operation and does have the ability to uh, support a battery backup as well. Um, the third one for it is actually a new device that we've actually recently got, which is the OX2 channel receiver. Uh, so it's just a very simple uh, two relay outs. Uh, there's two color coded, so not easy to mix up. Uh, can support both 24 volt and 12 volt. Uh, 24 volt, uh, the switch between that requires you to insert a little, uh, essentially a stopper into it, which actually comes with the device itself. So if you need to set it up for uh, 24 volts, you can set up normally. If you do need to set up for 12 volt, this very easily puts stopper in and essentially drops it down. Uh, it also has voltage free contacts as well. So you can use it to trigger um, pretty much a large variety of devices from five volt to 24 volt without much issues. So getting into the actual gist of it, so this is our showroom home set of three. It's currently operational. We actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. This is currently my testing set as well, so that's useful. Um, as you can currently notice, I have devices already set up here. However, what I will do is I will show you the two methods of actually adding up a gate. So firstly, generally when you actually set up a gate, you'll actually have a remote control for the gate itself. So if I simply press this button, it will operate the gate behind me. A bit difficult to see, but hopefully it's all good and return as well actually it's a mono unfortunately this is a mono directional so it doesn't really have a good response time for it um so for to actually add the nice gates you first need to have the latest version of uh Fubara firmware i'm currently running 5.050 uh, which actually supports uh, nice gates themselves and much like adding a Z-Wave device uh, or essentially a quick app to system, you simply have to go to your cogwheel, go to your devices tab. Under here, you'll see all the list of devices and press your little plus button. So it'll then ask you whether or not you want a Z-Wave device, a nice device or another device, so a camera. So they press nice device and this is where you actually set up. So there are two methods. Uh, one is using remote control, which I'll show you right now. 
Uh, for this, I've actually unplugged the second gate as you have to pair them individually because it does cause some issues if you have uh, multiple gates at the same time running off the same remote. So all I'm going to simply do is set up border detection and just click the remote twice. So press it once, wait a couple seconds and press it again. As you can see, it's already detected. So choose protocol, which is mono, which means one directional. Um, what this will mean is when it's actually set up in the Fubara, you can get bi-directional remotes. If you do set up using a monodirectional remote, you won't actually get positioning of the gate itself. Um, if you do choose a bi-directional remote, it will actually sync up to your home center and tell you whether or not the gate is open or closed. Um, unfortunately, at the current point in time, it doesn't have a partially open or partially closed because the gate itself doesn't actually know if it is what percentage it is at. So if it's partially open, it'll assume that it's not closed. However, once this is done, uh, we just need to choose our device type and template. So for this, we have a couple of selections. For this one in particular, it is a sliding gate. So that is now completely done. Let's take that. And where now was that we're... Where was that receiver, sorry, Mark? When you were uh, clicking the remote, did you already have the receiver built in? The receiver is actually already installed in the motor itself. Because it's not Z-Wave, is it? It's probably 433. Nah, it's, nah, it's 433. Yeah, right. Okay. Nah, so you've got good. to have the motor powered up first. Yes. Yeah. Nah, all good. So what you have to do now is you actually have to sync the buttons to the remote. Now, because I only have a two-button remote at the moment, I only have it set up by uh, step by step. So same button will open and close. So simply press the bind mode button, press it once, and press it a second time. It'll start binding. Wait for a couple of seconds. Uh, occasionally it will also fail out as well, which is a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, but the chances of generally when it binds with a remote itself, it binds pretty much 100% of the time. Let's go wait for the binding to go through. Yep, so that's now camera is finished and we can simply test it to confirm if it actually has gone through. Ah, I have to wait 10 seconds, bear with me. So once you've actually bound uh, the Fubara to the unit itself, it acts as though you've bound a new remote control to the device itself. Uh, as such, it has a 10 second period after you have actually bound it before I can send commands because it's still expecting another device to connect to it. There we go. All right. So once it's actually been paired through, uh, if it does get stuck in learning mode, the easiest way of actually uh, fixing it, getting out of it, is just to power it down and power it back up again. It doesn't take very long, generally because you connect it up to a primary fuse. Um, however, as you can see uh, by this preview little function here, I'll go back to home. Fix it on display. As you can see, the device itself doesn't actually know its location. The reason for it is it is only a mo uh, what is it? Uh, single response for it. Um, it's not a bi-directional response, which means you can send commands to it, but it won't actually be able to tell which position it's in. Uh, if you do want to actually connect it up using a remote control, uh, my suggestion would be to use a bi-directional remote. It's a lot more effective. Um, as, as you can see at the moment, the only control I have for it is step by step. So press left. And then we'll move right in a second. There you go. So that's one method for it. I'll put this in the system as sliding gate. Put it in the nice gate section. As you can see, it does try to load the system using a generic Z Wave role. So it's tried to load it in thinking it is a roller shutter module. Uh, don't really have to worry about that too much, as that role itself doesn't really cause any issue in your system. So that's the first method for it. You then have a second method, which is actually the method I prefer. Uh, so bear with me one second. I just need to connect them up. All right, so to my left, I actually have a nice leaf gate. So essentially it's a normal opening gate. Uh, and at the current point in time, it's not connected to the system and it's also not connected up to a remote. So I have no way of controlling it at all or anything. 
So the first method is pairing it up with remote control, which you've just seen before. The second method for it is pairing it directly up to the transceiver, actually mount inside your device itself. Um, I have a gate hop just to my left, and I'm just going to simply pair it much in the same way as you pair the normal nice gates uh, by the remote control. You simply press your plus. This time you do not actually select a remote control, you just press no, and this opens up your protocol choice for it. Uh, if you have a mono transceiver, you choose mono. If you have a bi-directional transceiver, you choose bi-directional. What that will actually allow you to do, instead of uh, only having a essentially open close function that's on it, um, that's either or, you can't really choose whether or not you specifically want it open or specifically want it close, is you have uh, the actual status and whether or not it is open or closed. Um, it's easy to show you. So select bi-directional, the transceiver is a bi-directional and choose the gate type. So I have a leaf gate and that's it. So much like with the previous one, you choose the step-by-step, -step, put it into bind mode on your device itself, on your transceiver and your nice gate, hold down your button until you get a green LED. All good. Once you've done that, press confirm. Now what will happen is the gate behind me to my left will actually function. However, that is not the gate that we're pairing. Instead, it is actually searching for this device. So once it's done that, we simply just have to wait a couple of seconds for the device itself to exit pairing mode. Uh, stays active for another 10 seconds in case you want to pair up multiple remote controls to it. Uh, if I was to actually want to pair up all of my remote controls and the bar at the same time, I would simply just wait until it goes in that mode again after it's done that, and then pair next remote and next remote and so on and so forth. So now that's connected, it says finish, we can give it a test. You can probably hear it whirring. So it's currently opening. I've stopped it and it goes the opposite direction now. So we press finish. We can just call this nice leaf gate. And to get positioning, we just need to send it the other way. As you can see, the gate's currently closed. If I was to partially open this and stop it, it doesn't actually tell me anything. The reason for that is it only remembers the last position it was connected to. So it's currently in the closed position, which means it was opened. Press it again, we'll return back to the closed. Now it comes through open. And it's in the open position. You probably hear uh, the wood on the actual display going as well for that one. So there's the robust gate, the walkie gate, and then there is the final gate uh, item, which is the transceiver module. So the transceiver module is actually about this big. That's it itself. And I've simply just connected up to all just my wiring, but I'm not known for being a good electrician. I was connected up to a very easy virus smart implant. So that device itself is actually already connected up to my system. If I go to my devices, my Z-Wave, and here I have already connected up the white relay to the device. Now the white relay for it is the relay that actually comes out of it. It's relay one. So all I need to do for it is actually to pair up that transceiver with this remote, uh, much in the same way as you actually pair it to one of those systems. You simply just hold the transceiver button down this. Wait for the LED to come on. And then you hold down the button on your remote until it flashes three times at you. Perfect. Then you release. Wait for it to stop being green. As such. And then, if you can actually hear on the microphone, there's a little click that occurs. Don't know if the microphone picks it up, but as you can see, button two on this device will actually trigger the little running man icon on the interface. 
We then use that to do such things as, I already have a pre-made scene for it. If I go to scenes, has set up so whenever my buttons actually get pressed, it does actually sync up to both the buttons. So really active. So if I press this, it go that blind behind me actually goes up. That's actually just a Z wave blind. And I press the other button, blind goes down. So very easy to set up one of those. Uh, also very easy on pair. And the wiring for that is very simple as well. So no real issues that. So uh, thanks for thanks for coming to the webinar. Uh, hopefully it's been somewhat uh, enlightening to you. Um, if you do have any further questions, feel free to either contact myself or contact uh, office at office at dhsys.com.au. Uh, my personal email is mark at dhsys.com.au as well. Uh, or you can call our office phone line and somebody will be able to assist you or redirect you to whatever queries you may have. Well, thank you very much for being here.